it's time to talk 4080, and I am super, super late with this. I'm very sorry. I have the Asus 4080 GeForce RTX Tough Gaming. And no, things haven't gotten so bad that Asus is giving away 4080s to reviewers. I actually paid for this at retail. Oh, it hurt. But I had to test some things for science. <laughs> I've actually had this for a while. I've been a little under the weather. I'm recovering now, which is good. So I have more time for this sorts of thing. 4080 is kind of an odd duck. Like me, aww. NVIDIA was in kind of a tough spot when they launched the 4090. You know, there's a lot of competition from AMD, kind of in the value proposition, but NVIDIA has kind of been there, done that. They've got the drivers and they've got a huge team and they've got all the enterprise customers and they've got a lot of experience with things beyond gaming. They've got a lot of partnerships with gaming companies. And the 4090, even months and months since launch, remains sort of the undisputed performance champion. But NVIDIA is going to charge you for that. And it kind of makes sense. I mean, if you are out for maximum shareholder value, the same silicon that goes into the 4090, you can sell to the enterprise customers for many thousands of dollars more. It's, it's sort of become a weird economic situation. It used to be the case that some of your enterprise stuff you could sell to gamers and still get some money out of it. But now gaming really is kind of sort of a lost leader. I mean, the enterprise is buying GPU-like compute things as fast as they can be made because there's a lot of money to be made with AI and breakthroughs and that sort of thing. So gamers sort of take a back seat with that. And we see that right now with the 4090 availability. People are looking at the 4080 and they're buying the 4090 because these are in stock everywhere. So this, this, this is a 4080. Now MSRP on those is supposed to be around 1200. This was in fact $1,400. Now, before you say, oh, but this is a premium card. No, this is the ASUS Tough Gaming. ASUS has like 12 versions of everything that they come up with. And the Tough Gaming is usually the sweet spot of value, performance, etc., etc. But this is $1,400. Which is really not a lot less expensive than the 4090 MSRP. So maybe did NVIDIA, are we saying that NVIDIA set the price of the 4090 too low? because that also seems completely absurd. Now, let's take a look at the box. Let's see what we got. I sort of like what Asus did here. They, they chopped the corner, you know, off the box. I guess that's good. Your frack is a swear word. Papers don't have corners and there's more than one God. Oh my God. Got our weirdly shaped box. The tough gaming experience. Triple power cable check that's interesting it's not a quadruple power cable like the 4090 an anti-sag peg Boop. an enormous gpu geforce rtx get the giant see-through heatsink at the back here big triple fan design it's a four slot card two hdmi and three display port although you can only use any four of them at once also in the box, we've got the Asus Welcome Packet, which has got some cool stuff in it. We've got our Asus Tough Gaming membership card. I guess I can put that in my wallet. <laughs> the warranty card, the instructions on how to use things, a quickie installation manual, you know, quick start guide, it's pretty substantial. And then a little thank you thing, like a little stand up thing, like, oh, thank you for purchasing. You're welcome, Asus. Now the design of this card is really interesting. There's a lot of room around the card for the heatsink to breathe. And the fin density, like the density, like how close are the fins together on the heatsink, really not as high as what we've seen from GPUs in the past. This isn't a, a vapor chamber design or anything like that, as, as far as I can tell, but there are a lot of heat pipes. It has a physical switch for the BIOS mode, performance or quiet mode. It comes by default in the performance mode. It has a handy attractive metal back plate, so that'll help it not sag as well. And really the PCB isn't very large. This, this card is at least 50% heatsink. The actual IO backplate is two slots, even though this is, you know, like I said, a four slot card. It may be a little problematic to fit this GPU even in micro ATX builds. It's like we did this micro ATX in the Define 7 Mini. 
Will it fit? Not even a little bit. Not even with fans. It just ain't happening. Even if it wasn't, you know, so long, it wouldn't be able to breathe. Not with our, uh, our MSI B650 motherboard, so. All right, let's get to the gaming performance. So first up for the benchmarks is Cyberpunk 2077. And I kind of wanted to do something different. I wanted to group the data a little differently with this because, yeah, you've got ray tracing as a really good example of what can be done. You know, it looks really good in Cyberpunk 2077. Cyberpunk 2077, the engine has also had its fair share of problems since launch. But as of late December 2022, things have gotten a lot better. There's also Fidelity FX, AMD's upscaling technology, as well as DLSS, and pretty good support for both in the game, at least as far as I can tell. Like just for me, visually looking at it and some of the benchmarks that we've done. And I can see that some people would maybe want to play it in 1080p with really high visual fidelity settings, but I could also see that maybe people would want to play it at 4K and buttery smooth goodness, maybe with or w without ray tracing, depending on what your preferences are. And so that's kind of what this graph breakdown is. And we can see, yeah, clearly the 4090 is absolutely dominating everything. But the 4080 is really holding its own. I mean, it's doing 102 FPS versus the, you know, 62-ish FPS that the 7900 XTX can manage at 1080p. And that's with Fidelity FX and DLSS off. Yeah, and that's just owing to the architecture of the 7900 XTX. We see that in some other games, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider can really get that high, you know, 320, 330 FPS on Team Green, but at 1080p, AMD's just not able to manage that just because of their graphics architecture and, and some other stuff. Maybe they'll get there with driver updates, but the 7900 XTX, if you look at those benchmarks, if you look at just 1080p, I think it's sort of misleading because you think the 7900 XTX doesn't have the horsepower, and that's not really it. Step up to 1440p with Fidelity FX and DLSS off, and you get a little bit more of a spread here, but again, Team Green, pretty pretty dominating here at 2160p 4k with fidelity fx and dlss disabled i don't think it's playable even on the 4090 and we're seeing about 30 fps from our rtx 4080 which is pretty respectable considering the 4090 it was only managing 44 yeah 4090 is faster film at 11. it's sort of around here that it dawned on me what's been bothering me about this cpu launch because think back to like the 2000 series which was arguably not a great launch like the the 1080 ti was just a legendary card in all respects everybody looks at that but but even the 2000 series cards the 2080 and the 2070 that's when we i think we started this trajectory of it still costs a lot but you're not really getting maybe as much as you might expect because with the 2080 and the 2070 the best i can recall and maybe this is rose colored glasses but the 2080 was maybe 30 to 40 percent more expensive but the 2070 was you know between 66 and 80 percent of the performance so you could save almost half and get two-thirds of the performance well there's like 200 dollars difference between the rtx 4080 and the 4090 and that's really there's a bigger difference in performance here than one would expect for so little Okay, $1,200 versus $1,600 or $1,700. You know, again, those prices seem pretty crazy for GPUs, especially considering the last generation. So that's sort of point one of why I think the pricing this generation is designed more to move NVIDIA's old inventory than to really to move their new stuff. And that's why we don't see as many 4090s actually in stock, I think, and why they're trying to get rid of the 4080 $1,200, because the margins are probably better on that product. Now, if we break down our other performance here, really the, the 4080 does pretty well 164 fps is kind of an engine limit in cyberpunk sort of kind of when we're talking about these settings and everything else that's going on here but for dlss or fidelity fx on the quality preset you know 60 fps versus 37 fps not really a great showing for team red here you can fiddle with the settings you can turn the fidelity down and uh, see what i did there pun and get a little bit better frame rate so i feel like this might be slightly biased against team red but the performance here really is not in question for the 4080. It's really good. What makes me less excited about it is the price. And that's why I keep sort of waffling on this a little bit. So for this graph, it's just a breakdown of the 7900 XTX, the 4080, and the 4090. How does that actually stack up? And again, we see at 1080, 7900 XTX is falling a little behind. 
And at 1080, there's really not a lot of performance difference between the 4080 and the 4090. Uh, you know, with Fidelity FX and DLSS off, 219 versus 237, that's not a huge difference. I'm not sure. I mean, maybe it would be worth $200, $400. I don't think so. I mean, over 200 FPS. Uh, I don't know. I'd probably go for a last generation GPU if I had to have Team Green. Then we have, you know, kind of in the middle of the road, 1440p. And here is where things get interesting. With Fidelity FX and DLSS off, you know, 7900 XTX and the 4080 are neck and neck. And I'm just, again, my mind is just on price. $999, $1,000 versus $1,400. And those are prices actually paid, like not street price or anything else. You can, I guess there's a, there was a couple $1,100 versions of the 7900 XTX, but what I got from AMD.com, that's $1,000. At 2160p, it's 4090 domination, and 2160p with Fidelity FX and DLSS at ultra performance, again, 4090 domination, but it really is neck and neck with the 7900 XTX and the 4080. That's not good news for NVIDIA, probably means if you hold out that NVIDIA is going to have a pricing adjustment. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, of course, 1080p, 1440, and 2160p. All of these frame rates are just bananas. 287 FPS for uh, for our lowly $900 7900 XTX. You can get two 7900 XTXs for the price of a 4090. All the way up to 150 versus 156 FPS at 4K. For an older title like Borderlands 3, if we compare the 4080 and the 4090 along with the 7900 XTX, uh, you know, it doesn't look as good in this title. The, the 4080 probably could be a little better here, and this may be down to driver optimizations or something else. I really don't know why we were only getting 184 FPS at 1440p. That's kind of the sweet spot for Borderlands 3 and these texture settings. I, it really, it, it doesn't make sense. I feel like this will probably be corrected in a driver update or something like that, but it was repeatable on both Intel and AMD systems, at least the uh, performance disparity. The actual frame rates varied, of course. Deus Ex Mankind Divided on high. It's a similar story. Team Green definitely takes the win here, and there's functionally no difference between a 4080 and a 4090 for 1080p and 1440p. At 4K, of course, the 4090 pulls ahead uh, by, uh, you know, 134 to 188 FPS. 188 is a pretty big uplift over 134. Now, if we take a look at our artificial benchmarks and see what the breakdown is, so this is a great showcase of why you shouldn't necessarily trust artificial benchmarks, because if you look at the Fire Strike score, I mean, it doesn't really look super good for the 4080. Firestrike Extreme also lags behind. Time Spy looks pretty good, although maybe not as good as one might expect. Firestrike Ultra lags behind. Port Royal looks, you know, like it's it's kind of lagging behind. Time Spy Extreme, it's kind of lagging behind. If you look at the artificial benchmarks, it really doesn't make a case here for NVIDIA. Maybe the 4090 if you're chasing the absolute best numbers, but the 4080 really doesn't look good in these artificial benchmarks at least at this price point. Another thing that I wanted to check in the benchmarks was Creative Suite performance. How does it perform when we're talking about the Creative Suite? Well, fortunately, Puget Systems has Puget Bench, and so the Premiere Pro and Photoshop benchmark here was really interesting. So I think there's probably a driver issue here with Photoshop because it pretty consistently would keep crashing. So I don't know. Premiere Pro and a 4080, do you use a Premiere Pro and a 4080? Does it actually work okay? In the test project, it seemed to be running out of texture memory, and the system let it allocate more texture memory than it had, and then it would crash. So, there's not really a lot of difference performance for in Premiere Pro between any of the three cards that would complete the test successfully. And in Photoshop, everything basically worked according to plan. The 7900 kind of lags behind the other three cards, but the 7900 XTX and the 4080 and the 4090 did pretty well here. And this is actually kind of a first for AMD. It's not historically been the case that AMD's performance in these productivity benchmarks would be as close to their NVIDIA counterparts. So that is maybe another vote that I think that NVIDIA is gonna have to do a price adjustment. I mean, well, probably not. I mean, the 4070 Ti is gonna launch and it's probably gonna be $1,000. And people are probably still gonna pay it, but it doesn't, really the pricing does not make any sense to me unless you're trying to move 3000 series inventory and then the pricing makes perfect sense. And that's about it for the benchmarks. I mean, <laughs> I keep, I just, I'm fixated on the pricing here and it's because I've experienced, you know, like 10 generations of GPUs in my lifetime. And this is not, 
like one of the great things about gaming is the enthusiasm that you can share with other gamers. Like, look at this thing, look at this thing that I figured out, or look at RTX Quake. We we can take the old thing and make it new. I, I wonder when when they're going to have RTX, you know, Day of the Tentacle. <laughs> I could definitely go for some uh, some some ray tracing on purple tentacle. That would that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be taken out of context. But it's hard to get that excited about these kinds of things because, you know, $1,000 is a lot of money. And I'm sure that the engineering and the costs and everything else has gone a long way. And $1,000 doesn't go as, as long as it used to. But I think the real innovation is happening farther down the GPU stack. I think that, that people can enjoy, you know, the two to $300 GPUs and not really miss out on anything. And I figured that's probably what NVIDIA's strategy is here. It's like, it's no use getting mad that it's $1,700 or $1,400 or $1,200 because there are some people that are, that are going to pay it. And I think that, you know, they're making in those quantities. They're not overshooting that. There are probably warehouses and warehouses full of 3,000 series cards that a lot of people will be perfectly happy with. So, yeah, I don't know. It's no wonder that the, the market reception for the 4080 at its pricing has been what it, what it was and why I struggled a little bit to put a plan together for this video. I mean, the 4080, from an engineering perspective and a performance pr perspective, it's got the goods. But $1,400 doesn't make any sense at all unless you're just trying to move your old inventory. You don't want to make too many of it, and you can sell that same 4000 series GPUs to researchers or people doing AI, people doing anything other than gaming, because gaming is basically a loss leader product. And, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of accidental that the engineering that goes into gamer products benefits gamers well you know that's not really true with the driver there's a lot that goes into that and gaming is a multi-billion dollar industry that's not what i mean i just mean that the silicon and the engineering and everything else if there is another customer who will buy the same thing for a different application at a higher price then those customers are going to get preference preferential treatment um nvidia would have to probably come up with two different products that are kind of competing with one another in terms of like, well, they wouldn't really be competing. You'd have a product for your enterprise and your data center customers and a product for your, your gaming customers in order to sort of optimize the path for both of those. And it may be optimizing production cost path. It may be optimizing functionality path. I don't really know, but I don't think this trajectory of, you know, $1,500, $2,000, $2,500 GPUs is sustainable in a consumer market, even though we get a lot of enjoyment out of it. And even though if you, it's like, how much does this cost per hour? And it's still on the order of pennies per hour because I get a lot of mileage out of my GPUs, but it is very frustrating. And I don't really, uh, there's so many other aspects of this that I could vocalize, but I think you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, 4080, it's got the goods for performance. The price, it stings a bit. And I think that if Nvidia wants to move a lot of them, they're gonna have to adjust their price because there are competing cards that are almost as good, better in some ways, and the cost $400 less in the retail market. I don't know. We'll see what the we'll see what the pricing for the 4070 Ti brings. The 4080 with less VRAM. <sighs> Once again, I'm Whittle. This is Level One. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level One forums. If I've missed something, let me know. Let's engage.